The following is a presentation of the Championship Racing Network. Crossed Flags, a racing podcast. It's your midweek fix for racing news and information. Brought to you by the Championship Racing Network. Now let's head trackside to join your host, Steve West and Matt Nicholson. Well, after a week off, we finally get to episode number 21, which means Crossed Flags is a podcast that can officially drink. Uh, <laughs> welcome into it. We appreciate Ooh. you joining us. I'm Steve West, Matt Nicholson, producer Molly, and there's Carrie. We'll talk about that in a little while. That'll come in later. Uh, plus, we're going to talk to Molly later as well. She had a big adventure this past week, and we also wanted to get her opinion on something that Bristol Motor Speedway is talking about doing. Mm, that I'm not thrilled about. Yeah, I'm not. I'm just not really sure how it's going to work. I, I'm not either. So I'm we'll not just deal either. with that. Uh, a couple of things news-wise. Congratulations out to Cole Custer and his wife on the birth of their child. Mm-hmm. We like that. Um, less likable is what Uncos Hollinger Racing has done in IndyCar. They have decided that Agustin Canapino, not their driver anymore. Effective now. Okay. These guys have been off for now almost three weeks. Mm -hmm. Why make the decision now as you're getting ready to come off your Olympic break? Your guess is as good as mine. I I don't know. And they haven't announced their replacement driver yet, so we'll be keeping an eye on that. We might have more information on Saturday. We'll have more information on this whole story come Saturday as well during the two-hour show. Don't forget about it. Uh, check it out on CRN Live on YouTube, 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central Time. Uh, let's see, what else? We're going to have a lot more information on Christopher Bell's crew chief. <laughs> let's just say that Adam's going to be available, but not traveling to the track. War room. Yeah, he's going to be in the war room at Joe Gibbs Racing because he cannot really, well, he had to have surgery on both legs. Mm-hmm. How do you blow out both patella tendons at the same time? We'll give you all the details Saturday morning. Molly, you'd be interested in that. We'll have to Giving, talk about that later. Borrowing, borrowing a song title from the late Toby Keith, I ain't as good as I once was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. Adam, you're not as good as you once was. Yeah. As we all get older, we all come to the realization that, that our true. brain says, oh, yeah, we can do that. And then your body goes, <laughs> No, you can't. I've learned that real quick lately. Yeah. All right. So let's get into the meat of this here. Coming up a little bit later on, he's going to be on a soapbox. We're going to be talking about uh, Parker Rett's laugh, and he's getting a pretty good opportunity. But NASCAR is making him do something that they don't really make everybody else do. Yeah. We've got prime examples of that. Uh, Then we're going to talk about Bristol Motor Speedway and things that they got going on, and that's where we'll bring Molly in. But first things first, uh, a few weeks ago on this podcast, we started running down someone's idea of what a potential 2025 Cup Series schedule would look like, and we ripped it apart because it had races in both Montreal and Mexico City. It only had one Darlington race. I mean, the whole thing was just weird, way too weird is probably the best way to put it. Earlier this week, just a couple of days ago, since we record this on Wednesday, we had we got a report from somebody who's, they're pretty good inside the NASCAR reporting room, Jordan Bianchi, specifically of The Athletic, which they have come up with a deal that they work uh, in conjunction with the New York Times, but he's claiming, yeah, say what you want about that. Yeah. Um, He's come up with a report that claims he's got a leaked version of the 2025 Cup Series schedule. Now, I'm a little bit more inclined to believe that Jordan Bianchi might actually have it. But there's still questions that we have. And we're going to let you take a look at the playoff side of things first. Tentatively in air quotes. Yeah. And we say tentatively in air quotes because if you look at this very, very carefully, you start to realize that... If this is true, this is indeed NASCAR going, yeah, we're willing to change things up. Here you go. Tentative playoff schedule would start the same time with the same race that we have been seeing. August 31st, Darlington Raceway. Uh, Save face from this year in the Olympic break. It goes back to your normal start next year of Darlington. Perfect. The thing about it is, 
and and I have to admit, I haven't looked at this. Is August thirty first the beginning of that weekend? Yes. Okay, because if August thirty first is the date that they're purporting that the race is supposed to be going on, that's automatically wrong, because that would be Labor Day weekend. If August thirty first is the Friday of twenty twenty five, then we're good. So we're going to double well, check on that just real double quick. Double check that. But uh, I'm sorry. August 31st is a Saturday. Okay, so that does make sense then. All right. So decent start. That's where we figure we usually are. Worldwide Tech Raceway at Gateway, that's a new addition, but not a bad addition to the playoffs. I don't have a problem with Worldwide Tech Raceway at Gateway being in there. You know, if you're going to change things up, go ahead and change things up. Put you in the St. Louis market, and then you go to Bristol on September 13th. Yeah, 31st is Sunday, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't talk about right on Labor Day weekend then. Um, again, you move in Worldwide Tech Raceway Gateway. What you've done is you've moved out, in this case, Watkins Glen. I'm not so certain I'm big on that because I think in this, other than the Charlotte Roval, which it's not horrible, but at the same time, I don't really call it a road course. No. To me, you no. should have a dedicated road course yeah. in the playoffs. Yes. And then some. All right. So that brings us to round two, September 21st. We go back up to New Hampshire, which means Atlanta's uh, out of the playoffs. We, we knew Atlanta's going to be out based off of the, the in-season tournament starting. Yeah, which that's a weird thing. Then we go to Kansas. Then we go to Charlotte. Huh? That brings us to round three. Because if you look at it, we've traded effectively rounds between Charlotte and Talladega. And they're putting Talladega in the final elimination round. Now, yes, it's in the middle, but woof. That big a wild card in the round of eight between Vegas that, and Martinsville? I, I'm, I'm, the way they've adjusted the way they've adjusted the schedule now is it's back almost to where it originally started. Because it was originally in the weekend of Halloween. Oh, yeah. We had a ball with it's that, all, by the way. Oh, that was spectacular. We had so much fun dealing with what we called at that point in time Hallodega. It was so much fun. It was a blast. It was. To be out at the track on that weekend. I mean, Talladega is a party place anyway. And then you add in the aspect of Halloween. Ooh, a lot of fun. So, yeah, I wouldn't have a problem bringing that part of it back. But anybody. But this is in the playoffs, man. Right anybody there. within the state of Alabama that has a functioning brain cell. <laughs> There's a few of us. 5th, 12th, 19th. 1, 2, 3. That is the third weekend in October. What else is on the third weekend in October in this state? Hmm. It's a little rivalry game called the third Saturday in October. Might have heard of it. You may have heard of yeah. Yeah, you you very likely have heard of it. Now, I have to admit, so I don't know. Is that game here in Alabama or is that in Tennessee? That is going to be You're thinking here Tennessee? next year. Oh, so it's in Alabama in 25. Yeah. Oh. Be, uh, <laughs> hmm. Okay. So Somebody's not looking at a calendar. So if we go and look, if the schedules mirror, which they should, if the schedules mirror, I don't need 2034, Auburn. <clears throat> 2024. You are planning ahead, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's planning ahead, and then there's planning ahead. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still not happy that I'm not going to get to go to the Rose Bowl because they canceled that series. Mm. Anyways, um, let's see here. You would be looking to have Alabama having a home game. Against Tennessee. And Auburn having a home game. Against? Missouri. That could be a pretty tough one, too. And we haven't even looked up UAB or Jacksonville State or Troy or and, Samford. And for that area, JSU is drawing, starting to draw bigger and bigger names into Amherst Stadium at Bill Burgess Field. Yeah. So, Which see, is, I got that right. what, 30 miles away from the track? If that much. If that much. So uh, if this holds, 
real interesting. Ooh, the, 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 the good old heart of Dixie that we live in is going to be awfully busy. Oh, yeah. This, this will be the ultimate test on whether or not we have the ability to host multiple big events in this state, yeah. if this part of it holds. Yep. Phoenix, we already knew that was something that had already been announced. Uh, this will be year five yeah, for Phoenix. Yeah. So we're kind of wondering whether or not this is going to be longer term or whether they're already now starting to think it's about time to start rotating but, this but to see, different tracks. But see, with them starting to creep, of all places, creep Talladega down, mm -hmm. is the old little rumor that you've been hearing they're going to start shuffling dates around and could we be seeing a flirtation which I would absolutely love it. <laughs> a flirtation of the championship race here in our backyard? Yeah. Don't oh I would be ecstatic. Absolutely. And you got to realize they NASCAR is going to be a lot like the NFL in this. They're going to want to make sure that whoever has the championship weekend is going to have decent weather. Sure. First weekend in November, yeah, we can get cool here in the state of Alabama, but we're not going to be dealing with snow or, you know, really a whole lot of inclement weather. No. November 2nd is a pretty good time to be here in the state of Alabama. Sure. But do we really want to start the year at Daytona and end it by crowning the champion at the wild card of Talladega? I would. You know, well, talk about it, throwing everybody it, a major curveball. Is it any different than Daytona ending the regular season? Nope. Mm, no, that's true. No. So, it's not. yeah, they want to put Talladega on championship. Uh, we're, we're in. We had experience at championship weekend. We know how the flow yeah. goes. and But there's only a, a but few you're, tracks. But you're, be tra you're trading New Hampshire for Homestead. Yeah. No, scratch that. You're changing Gateway for Homestead. Yeah. Atlanta and New Hampshire swap with the SMI connection. True. Why are we swapping a the arguably the best mile and a half track on the circuit for a flat track? Why? Now, I will say this: the visuals of like sky shots on September twenty first in New Hampshire, it's going to be pretty. It will be, it, yeah, yeah. I've been in New Hampshire in the fall like that, and it will be a sight. It's pretty. There ain't no doubt about it. I don't know. We'll keep an eye on this, but that led to a potential release of a full. 2025 schedule that, that somebody, I believe Jordan Bianchi leaked. also kind of came up with. And this one's interesting because we keep getting more and more information when it comes to this. Now, this one particular slide that you're about to see uh, or that you're seeing also includes that playoff slate that we were just telling you about. And that does match up. Here's where I want to throw this line in here. Here's where, and you're going to see it here in just a little bit, if this schedule is the one that holds of where everybody that works in the front office of NASCAR that comes up with this schedule needs a cognitive test like the president of the United <laughs> President of the United States has to have. Yeah. Because you're gonna see why in a minute. All right. So let's kind of go through this here. Sure. Not much different here, although they are saying again what we saw earlier, clash at Bowman Gray. That's I, I gonna be, be in. real intriguing. I'd be in for it. South Carolina didn't get a whole lot of snow, so North Carolina. Well, that's true. Right on the edge though. Uh, Daytona duels, Daytona 500, Atlanta. That's what we've seen. Coda moves up a little bit and then to Phoenix, then to Vegas. Somebody, somebody, somebody's actually using their uh, brain yeah. because you're on that trek going down I 20 over to I 10 yeah. to run Coda, Phoenix, Vegas. Yeah. Makes and then sense. You're going to jump all the way to Homestead, Miami. Remember, we were talking about how you basically traded that out of the playoffs. Uh, give me a break. Miami, Martinsville, Darlington, that's throwback weekend. Bristol, and then you take an Easter break before coming to Talladega. A week off before a plate race? And this yep. matches with what we saw from the IndyCar schedule that came out earlier this year. It's so because it, yeah. the next weekend NASCAR is in Texas, that's when IndyCar comes to Barber. So that keeps so it, NASCAR and IndyCar back to back here in the state. It's making sense. Kansas, North Wilkesboro, that's All-Star Weekend again. Still don't have a problem there. Charlotte, Coca-Cola 600, Nashville. Cognitive test time. There you go. Who June with a 8th. functioning brain cell is going to project going to Mexico City in June? That's kind of like scheduling huh? Talladega again in July. Who? 
Why? You're going to go from Mexico City to Michigan? Yeah. Somebody get a globe. You had the map here. Right in here. You had it. You, you were going good right here. Here, you lost it. But they're also saying this. NASCAR has not finalized this. The word that we got earlier this week is that NASCAR is talking between Mexico City and Montreal to put one of them into that slot. They think the leader in the clubhouse is Mexico City, but there's still the door open for Montreal. Montreal to Michigan makes a heck of a lot more sense than Mexico City to Michigan. Cause Charlotte. Nashville, Mexico City, and Michigan, that's a three-week stretch. Charlotte. Holy cow. To Montreal makes more sense because... I have had a personal conversation with a hauler driver that did drive back in the era when the Bush series went to Mexico City for three years in a row. And he said that is the worst nightmare he has ever had to deal with because they had to run in convoys Mm -hmm. with Mexican state police and police of Mexico country, whatever they call it in there. But law enforcement, federales, the law enforcement, because of drug cartels that was on the path from Brownsville, Texas, all the way to Mexico City. Sure. What are we doing? I don't know. I I know that I know that NASCAR is keen on doing an international race. Montreal, six eight June eighth. I'm sorry, I'm not going to Mexico. I'm going to Montreal. Plain and simple, weather. It's going to be blisteringly hot in Mexico City. Uh, Pocono, Atlanta, Chicago, Chicago on the July 4th weekend. That makes three years in a row for that. Then you go out to Sonoma and then all the way back across the country to Dover, Delaware. So the Amazon Prime stretch is going to start Charlotte, Nashville, Mexico City, Michigan, Pocono. Then the Time Warner Warner Brothers uh, stuff will start Atlanta because we established that's going to yeah. start Atlanta. Atlanta, Chicago, Sonoma, Sonoma Dover, Dover and Indy, Indy, Brickyard 400. Notice it says Oval. That goes back to a deal that was signed uh, within the last couple of weeks with PPG Paints to be the title sponsor of the Brickyard 400. So we know for the next few years we're going to be on the Oval at Indianapolis. So Fox gave up the 600. Yep. NBC's actually giving up Indianapolis and, and Chicago. Chicago. Yeah, they are. Well, mm. Then we go back to NBC to pick up the end of it. Iowa, Watkins Glen, Richmond, Daytona, which that's not all that terrifically different from what I mean. The, no. the order is a little different. Obviously, Close, we've already yeah. been to Iowa this year, but all of those tracks were there. And then you get into the playoffs. This is this is more realistic than the schedule that we saw earlier this year. But, woof, if this is the actual schedule, look at it. The only off weekend that you have from the beginning of the season is Easter, and then you don't get another weekend off for quite a while. Through the rest of the year. That's a long stretch to go from May or April 27th to November 2nd. Without an off weekend. Mm. I'm not sure 100% that this is realistic. I'm hoping it's not realistic. But we'll find out. Jeez. We'll find out real, real soon, I'm thinking. Because this seems to be getting closer and closer to them actually giving us a release date. If, Let's if, hope if, so. it, if, if Mexico City goes on June the 8th, like it's projected let's use that word and it goes through whoever finalizes the schedule and whoever discusses the schedule and lines up the dates needs to be banned out of the building in charlotte (laughs) this ridiculous time will tell again we'll keep you updated on it who knows we might have more information by this saturday and if we do we'll have it on crm uh then we go to another situation that we kind of are raising our eyebrows about There's a bunch of young kids down there in both the Xfinity Series and the Craftsman Truck Series who are going to get really, really close looks here as we go on towards the end of the year. Whether or not they are moving up from trucks to Xfinity or Xfinity and getting a ride maybe in a Cup Series race. 
although those opportunities are running out slowly but surely. Um, one of those guys is a guy who we're about to show you a picture of. His name is Parker Retzlaff. Parker Retzlaff is a pretty talented young kid, and he's done pretty well for himself down in the truck series, and he's proven to be a in just a couple of starts, an OK Xfinity Series racer as well. He's held his own for now a year and a half in Xfinity. He's going to get a chance in just I don't I don't even know when it is. I'll let you say when the da- chance is and all that. Daytona is his well was <laughs> keyword was his first scheduled Cup start. Mm-hmm. But now the um, what's what's a good word I could use here. The powers that be? Well, the cockamamie powers that be <laughs> um, decides he he needs to make a cup start before he runs in Daytona. Why? So he's going to now run, and of all cars, Carl Long's MBM 66 car, which is a Ford, and he, he's, he's with Chevrolet in Xfinity, mm. uh, at Richmond. Okay, let's back this up here. Who else had their first career Cup Series starts on a super speedway? Let's see here. Been a few. Harrison Burton, mm-hmm. Riley Erbst, Travis Pastrana, just to name a few. How is he any different from them? He's not. He's been at Daytona. Why do we? He's been at Talladega. Why? Oh, he's held his own. I've seen that 31 car be out front at Talladega multiple times that he's in. And by this photo, this would be my reaction too, knowing if I had to drive the MBM Cup car just to be like, oh, he's got to start. He's clear to run Daytona. He's ran enough super speedway races in Xfinity. In better cars than and the MBM car. That I would drive the Xfinity car before I drove that cup car he's going to have to drive just to get clearance to drive Daytona. This makes no sense. Yeah. You, you've you let other people do it. Erbst, Pastrana, Burton, just to name a few. But he's got to run. He's got to just get a start at a short track just to be able to run Daytona. I remember this from the first time that I had an experience of working at Talladega. I was working for a local radio station over there. And I happened to get the opportunity to be a pit road reporter during the Arca Series race. And I was the one that did the Victory Lane interview. Well, the winner happened to be a guy who you've probably heard of. His name is Joey Logano. Joey Logano had to run that Arca Series race that year, 2005, I think it was. It was. And he had to run that ARCA series race so that he could get the clearance to race the upper levels of NASCAR. I get it. If you have not been there and you don't have a significant amount of time behind a wheel of a NASCAR truck, Xfinity, or Cup Series car, yeah, they want to make sure that you can hold your own. ARCA is the best way to go. And you can do that. Well, ARCA is not joining them at Daytona. So that's out. But again, Parker Retzlaff has been running full-time in NASCAR the last couple of years. Has held his own at both Daytona and Talladega in trucks and or Xfinity. Why are we making him run another Cup Series race before he gets into the Cup Series race at Daytona? It's not that much different. I'm sorry, it's not. What's he going to learn in a Cup Series car at Richmond that's going to help him? At Daytona. Nothing. Bob, I would like to wager $1 on nothing. Nothing. And there is no correlation between the MBM car he's going to drive and the Chevrolet that he's going to drive later at Daytona. There's really not. I'm sorry. So we can let, and I can think back through the years, we can let, well, we make a Formula One world champion make a stock car start in ARCA, of all things, before he has to run Cup. 
Parker Retzloff ran through and he ran the chain and I call it the chain in Xfinity. You make a short track start to get cleared to do an intermediate. You make an intermediate start to get cleared to do a super speedway. You step the chain up. But he's done that. He's got two, four, six, six super speedway races in Xfinity. But we got to make him, and he's finished. I think he's finished all of them, if I'm not mistaken. But we're gonna we're gonna make him run a Cup start before he runs at Daytona, and the car he will run at Daytona will run circles around the car he's gonna get into this weekend. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> this makes no sense. If you do it for one, why are we not doing it and following protocol for everybody? Yeah. This this goes back to us. And, and and a consistent thing here. Molly probably can actually quote this by now. Just be consistent with the apl- application of the rules. Consistency. You're going to do it for one, do it for everybody. If you're not going to do it for one, don't do it for anybody else. Be like, consistent. Like if I'm in this scenario, if I'm the car owner and I'm getting ready, I'm getting ready to put either Molly, Carrie, or Steve in my car at a super speedway. Let's say Talladega. Okay. But oh, he, they've got to run. They got to make one cup series. They got to make one cup series start at a short track, just to be able to get cleared. Okay. Either one of them. They've got multiple Xfinity series starts on super speedways and have finished. But yet they. But you've got these other ones like names I've named off: Erbst, Pastrana, Burton, and I know there's several others. Mm-hmm. They got to do, she's got to do, she or they got to do that first. No, Mm -mm. if they didn't have to do it, they can get in my car because their seat is already set in my car. When it goes on the lift gate, we're going to Talladega. Or Daytona. Stay within your protocols that you have set. If one has to do it, everybody should have to do it. Yeah. This is a weird precedent that NASCAR is setting with this particular ruling here because it goes against everything that they have been doing in the past. If I had to, if I signed a contract tomorrow, which that'd be great if I did, mm-hmm. if I signed a contract tomorrow and either either Molly Carey or Steve comes up and puts a contract in front of me, I'm like, hey, drive, I want you to drive my car, Talladega, we're going to be the 39th entry. We're guaranteed a starting spot. I want you to drive the car. Great. Give me the pin. Wait a minute. I don't have the protocol and the clearances to run super speedways yet. I've only ran short tracks. Can we figure out a way to let me run, let's say, hypothetically, ARCA was still running in the fall like they always used to. Mm. Put me a car. Get me in the ARCA car. Let me follow the protocol. Do it the right way. Finish the race. It don't matter if I ride, which I'm going to go for the win, but it don't matter if I ride. They clear me to go. I'll drive the cup race on Sunday. All right? He and I know somebody that had to go through a solo. This is how easy it is, Arca. Go through a solo car test. All he had to do was make just a handful of clean laps. Yeah. You make clean laps. Hey, you're clear to go get in a pack of 43 cars. (laughs) What? Yeah. Welcome to it. Welcome Again, to the show, boys. This is that argument of be consistent in your rulings. Thank That's you. all we're asked. Just be consistent. And this is radically inconsistent. Uh, okay. He's mentioned the name Carrie. This is where we're going to bring Molly in because, um, yeah, this is an interesting situation. You've heard the name Carrie. We're going to introduce you to Carrie here probably next week. Because Carrie's going to start being a part of this show, and that means, unfortunately, that Molly's going to be less a part of this show. Kind of hate that, but yeah, at the same time, um, we we like might, Carrie. Carrie's a good guy, so, need, and we'll fair warning, Carrie. We're going to bring you in on conversations. Might need to be final class session next week. Maybe so. <laughs> Maybe so. Just say. All right. So Bristol Motor Speedway. Yeah. All right. Let's let's. Let's pave this road for a moment, shall we? Yep. Earlier on this year, there was a question about where the clash might happen 
in 2025 and beyond because mm -hmm. it does appear that we're done with the L.A. Coliseum. Hallelujah. Spectacular. They have said that they want to be in the Southern California market. Okay, do us all a favor. Slam the accelerator on the construction project at Auto Club. You've got a built-in track right there. That has now taken a different shape. Yeah, I know. Again. Again. Good grief. Yeah, again. So it appears, if the schedule that we just showed you just a little bit earlier on in this podcast comes together, that the clash is going to be in the Carolinas at Bowman Gray Stadium as opposed to Southern California. Okay, whatever. Now we're hearing that they want to take a track, mm -hmm. Bristol Motor Speedway, mm -hmm. you know, this place right yeah, here. That one. Think about this place, okay? 160,000 people can sit their butts in seats, and that's not including the suites. That's just in the grandstand, right? 160,000 people, 1599 packed themselves in a few years ago the, when yeah. they took the infield and made a football field out of the, it. The official tally on that one was 156,990. 156, yep. That was a game between the Tennessee Volunteers and the Virginia Tech Hokies. Battle at Bristol. Now, I can see how you can put a football field there. Easily. Can you put a baseball field there? No. Come Friday, Major League Baseball and Speedway Motorsports Incorporated – are talking about putting a baseball field inside Bristol because they want to put a game. <sighs> let me repeat that. A game between Atlanta and Cincinnati there. Creativity, Why? massive credit. Why? I'll, I'll give you massive credit for the creativity, the idea of taking an unusual place and putting a major league baseball game there. Okay, sure. I mean, we saw them do the field of dreams out at Iowa, Twice, kind of a neat thing. Yep. Uh, we have seen them right here in our own backyard, Rickwood field here in yep. Birmingham earlier yep. on this year, San Francisco giants versus the St. Louis Cardinals neat to be able to put it in a different place. This right here is inventive on the part of both SMI and major league baseball. This cannot be how this field is going to be. No, so, somebody got somebody got cute. Yes, yeah, somebody that. got real. Somebody cute. got real cute and tried to scale it, and said that the corners are three twenty. Here's your problem with that: those pit walls are where the foul lines run up to. They're fixed. Yeah, they, they don't are move. fixed. They don't move. Okay. And they're claiming that that's three twenty. Said it's three twenty. Yeah, I don't buy it. I'm not sure. But right there in the middle. The football field lines up fantastic. It's great. But baseball field? Huh? You're going to have to roll synthetic turf out because you can't plant grass. No, definitely not. So, I mean, Molly, that brings us to you. Sorry it's not Detroit playing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's okay. I this, prefer it's not. Honestly. Uh, well, yeah. Um, again, this uh, from what they're saying, maybe Atlanta versus Cincinnati. Yep. Mm -hmm. And again, I don't really, I, I give them points for creativity, but in my mind, I mean, I look at this and I remember seeing pictures of when the Angels first came in and they started playing in the LA Mausoleum. I mean, Coliseum, sorry, I, I do that mausoleum. every time. <laughs> the LA Mausoleum. Um, definitely not a facility made for baseball. No. So what they had to do was create their own version of a green monster in left field when they were mm -hmm. playing at the LA Coliseum and have this humongously tall fin uh, net. To me, it would make more sense to have home plate shifted over on the other side of the building that they're represented here if that's where they were going to put the field. That's the media center. Yeah. It, it, you shift home plate there and you turn the whole thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> I mean, you said when when you and when we kind of all sent text messages about this, you said you looked up the storyline and I know immediately you got an opinion on this. So by all means, the floor is yours. Well, so right after y'all texted me about this headline that was going to make my eyes pop out of my head, <laughs> I I didn't 
look it up, but I did go to Twitter because mm-hmm. you can find everything on oh, Twitter. Oh, sure. Yeah. And sure enough, it was like the first thing that popped up when I refreshed the page. Not and shocked. I didn't see the way that they were going to set it up. I just saw like the headline itself. Mm-hmm. And I just remember thinking, what, A, what are you going to do for turf? Was mm. the first thing for the actual One. field. Yeah. B, what are you going to do about the outfield wall? True. Yeah. Because you got to construct the batter's eye in center field. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And I just... And, you know, it brought me back to the battle at Bristol. When was that, 2015, 2016? Something like that, yeah. yeah and that was awesome. There. But, again, it was a football field. The dimensions yeah. of a football field are very, very, very different from a baseball field. And let's face it, you saw the infield on the previous picture. It fits inside that oh, in, yeah. infield at Bristol perfectly. Perfectly. But, again, just looking at that outfield wall kind of gives me a headache. <laughs> but you have <laughs> another thing you've got to factor in, too, now. You have this gigantic unless you've never seen it before with your own eyes, you really can't scope how big this is. The gigantic jumbotrons in the infield, Colossus, mm-hmm. their own cables that are literally that wide, that big. Yeah, suspended right over the, the middle. The thing weighs like, what, 2 million pounds? Something like that. you got to get that out of the way. Yeah, it's suspended literally right yeah, over the top of the infield. Oh, On yeah. cables. Yeah. Coming out of each corner of the turns, there are towers that are huge. Mm-hmm. Because if you leave that there, that automatically becomes oh, yeah. target practice oh, yeah. it's gonna oh, get yeah. hit. for every hitter. They're mm-hmm. going to be going, okay, I want to try and hit that thing. Do we know how deep the outfield, like, have they actually come out with an exact We haven't yet? heard anything on the dimensions the of the offic- field or how it's going to be laid the out. The official announcement hits Friday. They've got a press okay. conference scheduled Friday. So I'm anxious to see how the layout's going to be, the dimensions of the field, how they're going to construct this, that, or the other, because... I can see what they're trying to do. They're trying to get a world record for attendance for a baseball game. Sure. I know, could, and fine. If that's what you want to do, knock yourself out. I could see it. I don't see it hitting the official seating capacity of Bristol now, which mm-hmm. is 143. I'd be surprised. I'd be surprised. I could see 80. But when you have, if you construct Which the is field, not the record, by the way. No. Once you construct the field on one end of the, one end of the infield or the other, you're gonna cut seat. You're gonna have very, very obstructive view because that right there at the bottom where they have this set is turn three and four. Mm-hmm. That's the turn one and two end of the field end of the field, the racetrack. <laughs> turn one and two, you're gonna be like you're looking at ants. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and see, that's what I don't like about it because that's the beauty with you know a game like football or baseball or even basketball is that it's so intimate because the fans are so close to you. Like, sure, you can catch yeah. a foul ball. Sure, I don't. I know how you would do that here. Not really. Uh, you, you, mm. To By the way, for those of uh. you that, that don't know, to break the record in Major League Baseball, it's a preseason game, but still, to break the record for a Major League Baseball game, officially noted, it belongs to, I think, I uh, can't remember the year, 2008, if I remember right, between the Boston Red Sox and the L.A. Dodgers, when in spring training, they were just about to break spring training, and they played a game... In the L.A. Mausoleum, Coliseum, you know, that thing out there. 110,000 people showed up. Okay? But it was because you were dealing with the Dodgers, and everybody in L.A. loves the Dodgers, and the Red Sox had just come off a run of four years where they'd won two World Series. So being able to see the Red Sox play the Dodgers, not a regular thing anyway, they all came out in droves to go see that. And again, 110,000 for a spring training game. Atlanta and Cincinnati? 115,300. Okay, there you go. I don't know. Atlanta, Cincinnati? Are Atlanta people going to be willing to drive to Bristol? Are we going to call this the battle at I-75? Are Cincinnati people going to be willing to drive to Bristol? Because that's mm-hmm. what you got to find out. Uh, there are teams that will travel. Sure. Are Atlanta and Cincinnati them? But by technicality, Oof. your closest team in in region would be Washington. Yeah, you're you're splitting the difference between Washington, be Washington and Atlanta. Yeah. So Atlanta is five hours and sixteen minutes away from yeah. the Speedway. Depending on what the day is, and again, they're not talking from what we understand right now. They're not talking about doing a weekend series. They're talking about doing this as a one-off game. And Cincinnati is uh, five hours and 26 minutes. Okay, That's so it's, dead split. It's yeah, dead it's split. I'll even. give them that. It's a dead split. But mm. at the same time, 
are these fan bases willing to travel five and a half hours Ooh. one way to go to a baseball game at a racetrack where your sight lines are, we'll just say questionable. I'll, I'll give it to you. You're wearing a Detroit Tigers shirt. I am. Let's presume that this was a game between Detroit and fill in your whatever opponent you want to put in. <laughs> okay. It's, what, six hours, give or take, from Birmingham to get to Bristol. I'll give, I'll give you the reference point from my driveway to Bristol is five hours and two minutes. Okay. Would you, Molly, be willing, if this was Detroit versus fill in the blank, to drive to Bristol to watch this? See, I think me and my family would go just because, like I said, we grew up Tigers fans. Mm -hmm. And growing up in Michigan, part of my life, we don't – so what would you say, six hours from here? We don't see that as a far drive. Okay. Like we can do that in a day. So we would probably go for the experience. But I just mapped it, and it's nine hours and 21 minutes. So <laughs> I don't know how many Detroit fans would. I'm not saying they wouldn't. <laughs> It's just a long way to go. You would yes. see a lot of charter flights going into McGee Tyson in Knoxville. Uh, yeah, I yeah, you see a lot. I imagine you would, and you wouldn't be able to get a rental car out of Knoxville either. Or tri- no, not uh, not Knoxville, Tri City. Well, yeah. Bristol, and there ain't that many rental cars available in the Tri Cities nope. area. I again, this is one of those things where we had to bring Molly in because it is a question. It's a curiosity um, to put a baseball field in the middle of a racetrack. I don't think that's the actual layout. No. I'd be not. surprised if it is. Um, and I'll be interested to see what they what they do with this. And, you know, we may be able to talk about – we'll certainly talk about this more on Saturday during the full two-hour show. You guys are seeing me wipe my eyes. That's what I'm yeah. thinking about it. And we will probably bring this back up again next week. And um, that's because next week may be mm-hmm. one of the last times that you're our producer. Unfortunately, yes. I'll say this. One of. Because, One of, yeah. yeah, things can obviously change. Carrie needs time off or something right. like that. You know, you're, you're the backup at mm-hmm. that point in time. You're the primary. You're training him, but you would become his backup, I guess, at that point in time. I've been demoted to second string. <laughs> but we will say this. This wonderful little uh, room that we've had pretty much to ourselves here since we started this 21 shows. And I don't know. It's been a longer than that because we've had a couple of weeks off. So about 24 weeks ago. Uh, we no longer have it to ourselves, which is good news for our uh, home base here at Cumulus, and we like that because that means this is getting busier. But it does mean that things change and we'll be moving. Mm-hmm. But I will ask this. Uh, heard you got all greasy over the weekend. <laughs> you still got any on you? Have a hard time clearing, getting the grease off of you? No, I'm good now. My or, body clock is right again. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> she wasn't actually working on a car. She went to Greece. In Turkey. And Turkey. Oh. Okay. Aha. Uh-huh. Wow. All right, then. So uh, give us a real quick um, kind of overview. What all did you do? So my mom and I, we did a girl's trip. We made my dad stay at home because <laughs> <laughs> it had been a while since we had done one. And we started out in Athens, and we did a cruise through, like, the Aegean. And I think it's part of the Meredi- uh, Mediterranean, Mediterranean yeah. technically, but it's mostly the Aegean Sea. Uh, we poured out to Athens, and so the day we docked, we did a full day in Athens. You know, the touristy, the Parthenon all that stuff. The first day we were in Crete and then we went to Rhodes. Then we went to Santorini. Then we went to Kusadasi. Then we went to Istanbul and then we went to Mykonos and then we went back to Athens. That's quite, the, that's quite the trek right there. It was, we were exhausted. I bet. But, but you it had a was good time. so much fun. Cool. So much fun. All right. We'll have to see pictures at some point. In time. I took like 2000. I'm not surprised. <laughs> I'm really not look at all 2000, but wow. yeah, I'd be interested to see some of the pictures of all that stuff. Yeah. Very, very cool. Glad to have you back next week. Uh, because it'll be what we think will be one of the last of, times. Yeah. Um, we will do part three of the education of young Molly. Final test. <laughs> yeah. We'll see what it is that she's got when it comes to that and how much she's picked up. So Matt and I might have a little quiz for you. Oh no. Hmm. Here between, here here's what I'm going to give you as homework. Okay. Because I know that you do reviews okay. for Three Men Front on Jocks. Uh-huh. You have to, between now and next Wednesday, you have to watch Days of Thunder. I'll see if I can. Let me write that down. I'll see if I can find you it. You must watch it. That is your homework from this. We don't give you homework on this podcast. No. So we're giving you homework. You must watch Days of Thunder between now and next Wednesday so that we can get Molly's review on it. 
I'm putting it in my calendar right now. And there, there is a there is a line in the movie that is my favorite line, and we'll see if she can pick up on it. There you go. All right. It's the it's line. Thank you so much for checking us out. Next week, we'll not only do The Education of Young Molly Part 3, we will introduce you officially to Carrie. Y'all have a fantastic week. Join us on Saturday. Again, 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central Time, CRN Live on YouTube. Make sure you join us there because we're going to have a whole lot more information about this as it gets announced on Friday, and hopefully we'll have more information on things like the 2025 schedule. And he's only joining us for a couple of segments because you've got some football to deal with. Yeah, football season starts for the little fellas next week. So or this week, excuse me. He'll be joining us by phone because yep. he's got an early, early game on Saturday. But don't forget, join us then, and don't forget about joining us next week. We'll be back we think on Wednesday, I get all the, things being equal. N- here's a good segue to that. I get the Jefferson pilot kick off Saturday. There you go. <laughs> Y'all have a fantastic time. We'll talk to you Saturday and next Wednesday on CRN and cross flags. You've been listening to crossed flags, a racing podcast for more content like this. Subscribe to CRN Live on YouTube and you'll be set to catch the two-hour live show every Saturday morning at 9 Eastern, 8 Central. This has been a presentation of the Championship Racing Network.